Welcome aboard Free Dive with Seapoint Digital, your go-to podcast for deep dives into the world of digital marketing. I'm Christy. And I'm Anna Lynn. Your hosts navigating through the currents of growth, strategy, and innovation in the digital realm. We're going to talk. We're going to laugh. It's going to be a good time. Let's dive in. Welcome back to another episode of the Free Dive Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Billingsley. Today, I have with me, Elisa Meredith. Welcome, Elisa. Hey, thanks, Christy. Happy to be here. Yeah, we're so happy to have you. Um, I've known Elisa for quite some time, and I was really excited to uh, invite her on and share her story with us. So um, let's just dive right into it. Um, Do you want to just give us a bit of background into your story and your history. Um, you've you've done quite a few things in the marketing field. Um, why don't you give us background in how you got started and, and what your story is? Sure. Um, I got started way back in 1999. I was working at a refurbished telephone manufacturing place in Portland, Maine. So um, they needed somebody to do a newsletter and then they needed someone to write content for the website and eventually they need a website developer. So I took on those roles uh, and then I went into business for myself. So running a social media and content agency, which then morphed into a HubSpot agency. And then I kind of started focusing on more on Pinterest and Pinterest advertising. Um, so I've had some really fun opportunities there. Yeah. Yeah. And then I've uh, just, I worked at Tailwind, a startup, a small startup, and now I am at Sunrush in product marketing. So yes, I have done a lot of different marketing jobs. Yeah. I want to pick your brain for a second because I'm so interested in the Pinterest marketing that you did because Tina Gammon talked to us about your brilliant knowledge and working with you on uh, on Pinterest and just how much she just loved you with working with Pinterest. Like, How did you get started in that? Oh, goodness. Um, I I was just curious when Pinterest came out, I thought, is there going to be a marketing use case here? And that was before they had business profiles or anything. It was brand, brand new. So I started thinking about it and then I wrote about it. So I created a a downloadable ebook um, just to kind of put my thoughts out there. And it got a little bit of attention and somebody actually the client that Tina worked on came, came through in an email and he said, well, how do you do this? How do you do that? And then he finally said, can you just do it for me? So <laughs> I thought, wow, okay, I guess that there's something here <laughs> <laughs> and just enjoying it, It's always wonderful yeah. marketing when you can see the real results of what you're doing. So rewarding. Um, and that definitely was the case there. So then I was hooked. Um, and then social media examiner needed someone to teach like a, a last minute online session about Pinterest ads. And they asked me, I had never done any Pinterest advertising. So <laughs> I had to just go learn all about it and then teach a class. And that's yeah. how I got started. I totally forgot all about social media examiner. I used to, I used to use them all the time. Yep. Totally forgot about They're them. They're still around. They're still around. Yeah. So when it comes to HubSpot, so we're a HubSpot um, agency. Mm-hmm. How did you get started working in HubSpot? Are you still connected to HubSpot today? You know, what was the connection there? Oh, yes. So as I was trying to learn about content marketing, so I I did content marketing actually in my first marketing job, not realizing what it was. So I took um, really complex and horribly boring telephone manuals uh, <laughs> and rewrote them. Yeah. <laughs> so that people could actually use them. And I, I just put them online. And so I, I didn't have any, at that time, no strategy behind it. I just thought, but this is ridiculous. Who is going to understand this? Who is ever going to want to use this? Um, and people appreciated it. So I was kind of hooked on content marketing at the time, but I didn't really know what to do with it. Um, and then I, I became involved in this um, agency called Scalable Social Media. And I was initially just doing... I think I was just doing social media at first, but then I realized like, for one thing, it's so hard to get 
these business owners to talk to us so we have something interesting to post, but also mm. you can't just do social media, which I know it sounds so basic to you and me right now, but this was like 2009 when everybody saw all every Facebook pages updates in their feed. It was a totally different world, but I still knew like, this is not enough. You have to have something behind this. So I got into every HubSpot course that was available and just read and read. And eventually um, I had a client that I thought would be a good candidate for HubSpot. So um, I brought them on as an agency. We were probably the smallest HubSpot agency in history. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like they were it was useful to you to use the tools that they had. Oh, absolutely. And I had, um, I, I think of her as my advisor, Jill. We're still t in touch a little bit. Uh, she just, she was a, a fantastic business coach, right? Like that wasn't really part of the deal, but that, <laughs> that's what I got from HubSpot was a fantastic coach. She helped me get that one client on and, and she was just fantastic. So have very good feelings about HubSpot in general and Jill especially. Yeah. So in your years of marketing, was were there any particular, you know, challenges that you have faced uh, working in the marketing industry? Yes. <laughs> I think partially it's just, it's the change, the, the pace of change in marketing is um, yeah. relentless. But it, I think it makes life interesting. So yes, it's a challenge, but I like challenge. Um, so that's good. And then just always, there's always something you don't really know how to do or you haven't tried yet. And so I've just tried to always say yes. <laughs> so when someone asked me one time, many years ago, can you build this website on WordPress for me? I said, sure. <laughs> I mean, I knew I could do it, but I hadn't done it. Um, so just having the confidence to say yes and, and try things has been really helpful. Do you feel like you like really grew through that process or, or um, found new avenues of things that you love because you were willing to say yes to things? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it was um, that was one example. The other example was uh, the Pinterest ads right? Oh, we had a speaker drop out. Can you fill in last minute and teach Pinterest ads? I'd run one. Sure I can. <laughs> and that became, uh, I have to say website design was not anything I ever really liked. Um, but Pinterest advertising was fantastic, especially at first because, um, in the platform, you never pay, you didn't pay for a click on a pin. You pay, paid for a click on the pin to a website, which really kind of helps bring up the quality of the leads you get from Pinterest. So, uh, yeah, I was hooked on that. Yeah. So what, through that, was there any particular project, um, besides, besides that, besides Pinterest, just through your career that you were like particularly proud of or excited about? Yeah. So when I was at Tailwind, we were launching a product for, for Pinterest. I mean, not for the company Pinterest, but to be used on Pinterest. So there was a lot of need there for customer research um, and learning, you know, speaking in the voice of the customer. Um, there was also a need to set up a whole production unit for design that would work with the engineers in the back end. Um, so I got to do that. And it was just a great opportunity to see, you know, my work out there and being used. That was fun. So one of the things that we've, um, we've talked about, you know, we've, um, we've made a goal to interview women in, in marketing this last year and highlighting, you know, wonderful women in marketing, but we've also highlighted the particular challenges that women face in marketing, um, but also, also the successes of women have in marketing. Do you have any advice to give to young women aspiring to have a career in marketing? Uh, I mean, I think the biggest one is what I already said, just say yes. If Even if you're not confident that you can do something, go for it and just yeah. try it. Like, what's the, what's the worst that could happen? And it, it is difficult. I mean, it's no secret that there are biases against women in, in all areas of, of work life, but um, you know, we just have to <laughs> learn to be better at promoting ourselves as well. One thing 
I was really bad at um, originally was not keeping track of my wins. Yeah. Right. So when if you go job hunting or you're going to update your resume and someone says, OK, what are the numbers we can put on here? You better have numbers. Right. So I increased leads or I did this or like you've got to have actual numbers to back it up. So I wasn't good at that, um, but yeah. I am now. <laughs> So keep a document, just a running document of your wins. Um, I also think it's good to keep a document of accolades, I guess you could say. Like if someone says something wonderful about your work that really makes you feel good, take a screenshot of it, put it in your document and look at it from time to time because it's easy to get down on ourselves or think about our mistakes or feel like, is anything I'm doing working? Um, that's just a good reminder that yes, you are making an impact. Yeah. Oh, I totally agree. That's and that's great advice. In fact, we've talked about that in a in a previous episode. That um, it, it's a little bit of a joke around here because I keep um, I keep screenshots in my phone and um, um, of any time something goes well or someone says something nice about my work, and I've almost gotten a little bit too. <laughs> too generous with it so now there's just like tons and tons of like screenshots in my phone of like things that are like oh, that's, that was great. barely even a win for me but you know <laughs> no, to your take, point it it's like win, that really helps yeah it really helps in those moments when you're kind of doubting yourself and like am I actually good at my job can I actually do this you know to be able to have that that tangible evidence of like, no, I'm doing this, I'm doing good. I think that's great advice. So I'd love to see your portfolio. Yeah, I have that's to crazy. share some with you. <laughs> <laughs> so looking back, like looking back at your career, things that you've done, things that you want to do in the future, like how are you? You've seen you've seen a long history of of marketing. How are how do you um how do you envision the future of marketing and where, where would you like to picture yourself in that future? Goodness. The future is tomorrow. I mean, it, it it's, I wouldn't even know where to, how to predict what it will be. Um, I am thrilled with AI for the most part. I, I'm really loving chat GPT um, and Claude and all those LLMs where you can get to chat GPT or whatever, model you like best to do a little bit of the grunt work mm. for you to help you to brainstorm. So I think I've seen my productivity increase greatly using those tools. And I think it will, I think it will just continue um, just doing the work that frees up our brains for the creative part that really only humans can do at this point. Anyway, <laughs> I'd like to think there always be a need for us in marketing. And do you have any, like, do you have any plans for yourself? Do you have any goals for yourself? Anything like that? Well, um, I'm in a little bit of a new position, new-ish position at this point in product marketing, which is very different from content marketing or from running a marketing agency or um, some of the other things I've done. And for now, I just, I really enjoy that. It's a very independent role, but you get to be kind of the bridge between um, marketing and product and sales and customer support. So I really like trying to pull all those pieces together. And I think I just want to enjoy that and build my skills in that area for, for a while. Um, it took me a while to get here. So I'm just enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not working so much with content marketing anymore, but do you still enjoy working with social media, even for just, um, even just, uh, whether it's for companies or for yourself? No, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't do anything with content anymore. And with social media, no, I mean, every once in a while I'll, I'll post on LinkedIn or I'll post something I painted or I went to the beach on Instagram, but no, uh, I'm, it's shifted a lot. So where I'm really happy kind of being behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying that very much. And I never was big on doing social media for myself anyway. So, uh, yeah, I just like being the, the voice of the customer in the background. You've left Pinterest behind. <laughs> well, I still need recipes just like everybody else. Um, but as far <laughs> as marketing, yes, I haven't, haven't done any client work in about a year and a half. So, yeah. 
know, just enjoying it for fun. Well, that's great. Well, anything else that you want to share with us? Um, any advice, any tips for those in the marketing field? You've, you've probably covered this quite a bit, but I would say with AI, I think initially most of us were a little afraid. Um, we're hoping it wouldn't catch on. Um, but really, there's a tremendous amount of opportunity there to increase your own pro productivity, um, to build your skills even. Um, so I would say when something like that comes along, there are going to be people who lose out. Like I've, I've seen quite a loss in the content marketing um, job market, right? So companies thought, oh, I can use chat GPT to write all my content for me. <laughs> but if, if you were in that position, like how can you use this technology for your benefit instead? So there are always people who are going to make out well with advancements like this and it, it partially is up to you um, if that's going to be you or not so just be curious like I think marketers really are curious bunch um, we want to try things out and and learn more uh, I would just say when you stop learning maybe it's time to start doing something else because you really you really have to to keep enjoying and being good at marketing yeah oh I totally agree with that you really have to be willing to keep up with the the growth and the the new things that are coming and AI in particular. We've had so many conversations with almost every guest we've had. Have we talked about AI and the need to to learn it and accept it? So I t that's great advice. Totally agree. Yeah, it, um, accept it and learn to love it because it's it's here to stay. Well, thank you so much. We really appreciate all your insights and getting a, a bit of your background and your story. Um, how do we find you? Should we find you? <laughs> You're not on social media as much anymore, but do you have any <laughs> plugs that you want to share with us? Um, I mean, you can find me on LinkedIn, Alisa Meredith. Uh, I'm happy to connect. Uh, yeah, I think that'd be the best place. Great. <laughs> we'll leave it at that then. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, well, we thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Christy. We'll see everybody next time. It's the end. No, it's not. There's more. There's always more. Don't be sad. You can catch our full video interviews on our YouTube channel. Come find us. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share with your friends so that we're not sad. And follow us on TikTok. And Instagram. It'll make your day happier, promise. And we'll know if you do. <laughs> Until next time. <laughs>